And we're on the new moon of, of January where there's another winter storm about to come in. So we're gonna get out and fish now before that winter storm comes in because I don't want to be out here in like 15 degrees. It's like 30 right now, so it's not cold. Really rocky right here, right below the dam. That's one of the reasons why I have two rods set up exactly alike. <laughs> All right, fellas, I'm heading on home. I haven't caught anything. I got plenty of work to do. Probably can get started on this boat, whatever. Skunked. <laughs> Crazy, man. One of the things about a Carolina rig is you will get hung up in things. and. Uh, but one thing I did learn is that the weeds are starting to grow down there in the river, which is a good sign that things are, the days are getting longer and those sorts of things. And I needed a way to float the hooks above the bottom of the river. With a Paternoster rig, it doesn't matter. You know, the weight is at the bottom and then you'll come up and you have a dropper loop that'll have your bait on it. Another quick tip, before you start tying your flies, wash your hands and then coat your hands with some sort of oil. I usually get any kind of oil in the kitchen, that way your fly is sort of impregnated with oil. Uh, I needed a way to make my flies float. If you look at salmon and steelhead guys, what they will do is they will make what they call yarnies, where they'll, they will simulate an egg or... But what I'm going to do is use deer hair. The thing about deer hair is that you see this? Now that looks really cool, right? But the real magic is down here. That stuff, this hair is actually hollow. It has a honeycomb-like structure down in there. And that honeycomb-like structure is hollow and filled with air, and so it floats. So I can actually make a floating fly. You know, a lot of people get all mad when they see me tipping my flies and stuff with baits and those sorts of things. They just, what I'm going to do is clip that off, tie that there. It's going to do all this crazy stuff. We're essentially tying the wing portion of a... Carparadon or one of those things, Carparadons or whatever. Pull all these back, pull this forward, pull it hard and tight. Two, three, get it standing straight up like that. And we're going to build that base up in front of it. I'm going to show you what this does. Try to taper it as much as possible, but we really want to, yeah, it's about as good as we want to do it. And then I turn it upside down so we can get our half hitch on there. Got a half hitch. And hopefully, one, two, three, four, five. Looks like Goku or Vegeta or one of those guys if you ever watch Dragon Ball Z. Let's snip this off. There we go, just like that. And what I, if you want to get real fancy with it, you can spray that out. Now, those of you who tie flies for bluegill, that should look a, a whole lot like a bully's bluegill spider, except it just, instead of silly legs, you're using deer hair. The tip of the hook is completely open. This material is floating on top to keep the hook in that oriented position. It keeps it up off the bottom of the river. And the second thing is I always will tip that. So that whole hook, essentially, essentially the most useful part of that hook from the middle of the shank back is open to be tipped with maggots and worms and things like that. And each one of those little legs there will be just pulsing in the water as well. You know, float fly, whatever, I don't care what it's called. I mean, the point is, is that it adds some flotation to this. You could do this same thing with some synthetic, finish it off, except you see it doesn't have the same display. This will not stand up. It'll eventually just taper on back. Maybe we can splay it out that way or something, but it, it, it can see it doesn't quite have the um, the sort of awesomeness look like this, right? So check out the guys at Beaver Dam. Uh, you know, they have, uh, they import CLP uh, long tails. You know, I love long tails. Uh, they have grab bars that he makes stateside himself. So check him out. He's been uh, helpful here this first couple of weeks in January. And I will talk to you guys later.